This is a disclaimer. If you hear snoring during this video, it's because my little bulldog is helping me. And she's pretty excited about this, as you can tell. So as you're reading the textbook, it's only natural to wonder, well, what's the stuff that I really need to know? What is the stuff that I can cover if I want to? And it's just more or less background material. That's what this video is for. In section 2.1, most of it's important. If you scroll down a little bit, this manual that it's talking about, if you want to download it, you can. It's free. It's a PDF file. Uh, it's about 500 pages. It's very technical, and it goes into all the details of 32-bit uh, architecture and 64-bit architecture in Intel chips. If you've got a night that you just can't sleep, start reading this thing. I think your problem will be solved. Let's scroll down. This section know these different parts. Here's the CPU itself. Notice it's got little uh, registers. These are tiny little bits of memory that are super fast because they're on the chip itself. The arithmetic logic unit, just like it says, that's where the arithmetic takes place. And the logic, which is pretty simple when you get right down to it. This control unit does its job. It controls everything going on in this process. The clock is, well, it tells you down here, it synchronizes everything, but it's, it's a little wafer that vibrates billions of times a second, and it times everything to where it works correctly. If it weren't for the clock and the control unit, nothing would work in here at all. So we'll keep coming down. Make sure you know all of this section right here. The clock, very important. It's got what's called a machine cycle or a clock cycle. Make sure that you realize the relationship that has to the clock's speed. It's simple. One's just the reciprocal of the other, but know that relationship. These weight states it's talking about, the processor can run a lot faster than the memory can react, memory being RAM. So sometimes a processor has to just wait until the memory catches up. This instruction execution cycle know all of these steps. Most of the time it's shortened to fetch, decode, execute cycle. But each instruction that you're going to write or that the CPU executes has to go through these steps. It'll make more sense as we go through the process of learning assembly programming, but basically have this in your mind right now. This figure down here will help. So your code is loaded in. It gets temporarily stored in this code cache. There's an instruction pointer that always points to the next instruction that's going to happen. So once that instruction happens, it goes into a decoder, which then tells the control unit, oh, here's what you need to do. Because of the decoding, now then the chip knows, because of the control unit, whether we're going to be dealing with registers, which is almost always the case, whether there's going to be arithmetic and logic involved, whether there's going to be floating point arithmetic, to be handled, floating point meaning real numbers like 3.6, and also are we going to need data? So if this instruction requires something from RAM, then that has to be brought into a data cache. And maybe this instruction wants to store stuff into RAM, so then that means it's got to go back out this way. So this process goes on and on and on for every instruction in a program. Please understand what it takes to read something from RAM. The chip has to know where's the address of the data you want. Then it has to acknowledge that, oh, I'm fixing to read something in. And then the chip usually has to wait because the memory chips are slower than the CPU is. 
and then after all of that it can copy the data from RAM into the register usually where it's going to go. Please understand this says it usually takes it you know a single clock cycle well sometimes it takes more than that. When we're talking about cache make sure you understand this is not the same cache as uh, when you're talking about a browser. The idea is the same but this is hardware and actually it's a very fast response hardware and there's two levels one is actually on the chip the other is not and so the one on the chip is a lot faster so what does it take to execute a program well that's the the last little part in here anytime you run a program whether it's Microsoft Word or a game or a program you've written these steps happen make sure you know them very important remember we're dealing with a very low level uh, situation in assembly language you have to know these things that you didn't know as a high-level programmer but it'll make you a better high-level programmer if you look at this tip down here it's talking about the task manager let me start mine up all right as I'm making this video here's what's running the programs that are running on my machine now, you just can't see all of them so I've got a recorder going on that's how I'm making this video and so these two things go hand in hand Chrome is running that's how I'm visualizing the uh, textbook and Microsoft Word is over to the side notice what's using the CPU right now well mainly the recording program Word if you look at it it's not using the CPU at all because I'm not doing anything in Word right now now the task manager it shows that it's running these other processes down here there's a ton of them always running in the background you can turn some of them off you have to be careful uh, if you don't know what you're doing you can see the performance of your machine so here's how the CPU is performing right now while I'm making this video uh, you can tell how fast my chip is that means the clock inside my chip is vibrating at 3.1 billion times a second. That's pretty quick. Mostly though what you're going to use is this part of the task manager. And that pretty well brings us to the end of section 2.1. If you didn't pick up on it, you need to know pretty much everything in there.